I'm LaVon Reimer. I'm the founder and CEO of Luminous. Um, I like to say that I'm a musician turned lawyer turned entrepreneur. Luminous is a web-based service that is for private companies and it's, so we call it a business credit profile service and what it does is make it very easy for companies to meet their disclosure and reporting obligations for capital and credit. Today that's very hard for companies, uh, even those who have a CFO or professional financial staff. Uh, they have to put together information that they're going to share every time for each of their stakeholders. Um, in addition to that, they have the, um, the challenge of a very big commercial credit information provider who will remain nameless, who has a lot of wrong information about companies and there's no way to go in and get that credit file fixed other than to call customer support and hope and wait for a change. That's the challenge. Those are the challenges that companies have today. Um, they can't find a way to get that information across clearly. It could mean that they don't get a loan or they have a line of credit that's been, is going to be called. Uh, really significant, measurable impact on them that we are solving for them. This is uh, my third time as a CEO, my second time as a founder and CEO. And to be honest, I thought this time would be a piece of cake. You know, that uh, I did my first startup in 98, launched it in 98, and ran it till early 2004. So there were three very distinct cycles during that period of time. First there was the bubble, and I raised a ton of money. Uh, felt kind of easy in retrospect to do that. Then on mid-April of 2000, the bubble burst and I had to deal with that and deal with layoffs and keep us going. Uh, and then after 9-11, we hit yet another uh, tough cycle. So I really thought I had the equivalent of three street MBAs that I had earned and so it just had to be easier the next time out. Um, what I found is that there are just a, a whole new list of mistakes to be made in starting up a company because the fact is when you're creating a new business it's everything's being made up in a sense even though we have good models to follow and, and in this company I do have some good subscription models that I can adapt to there's still so much that's uncertain and new and different about each company plus this is a different time um, you know, capital requirements have changed for companies dramatically from what they were before. There are different expectations from investors about how soon we can launch and get traction and, and make uh, you know, our, our proof points. Um, so all of that's new and different and I've just found it to be uh, an interesting challenge to adapt and figure out what's different, um, reach back into my prior experiences and figure out what lessons I learned apply to this problem this time. Um, but um, I, I would just say in general that there's just a new set of challenges and opportunities available for startups today and it's exciting and it's uh, and I'm learning new things. In, in this company um, th there are there are internal things that um, I have to deal with personally that have tripped me up and there's some external um, characteristics of our market that have tripped me up. I would say the, the internal issues have been, um, it, it, I've had to learn something about myself which is that, that I have a strong inner geek and so I do get fascinated by the science. Uh, in this particular company we're, we're really pushing through some boundaries and limits on how we take in user supplied data and then verify the trustworthiness of that data. Um, the first couple of years I was so caught up in the intrigue of that technical challenge that that's all I wanted to talk about. Uh, that made it hard to raise money because I had investors not understanding what was the practical problem to solve and in fact it actually delayed the time the process for me of finding the practical business problem that could be solved with this fascinating science that I was, I was working on. The external um, factors that, are, that have tripped us up are that we're, 
we're dealing with what's called the capital mid market. It's this over six hundred billion dollar market that consists of bank loans, um, vendor and equipment financing. It's it's a world that most venture capitalists never encounter and maybe never have encountered in their prior experience. So if they have it so many years ago, they've kind of forgotten what it's like for companies that don't have investors. Uh, so if you don't have a, you know, if you have a big major venture capitalist backing you, the bank will just call the VC and say, are you backing this company or not? And if they say yes, and they're uh, the high tier, top tier VC, you get the loan. That's it, you know, it's done. Uh, so here I am talking to VCs and saying, let me tell you about this pain that's experienced by millions and millions of companies that don't have you, you know, in their back pocket, don't have you there to take the call. Um, and that's really foreign. So I had to learn the really hard way that when I'm pitching this company, I have to provide some basic education on my market. I think I'm pretty fortunate in having a really good group of, of investors and I have um, three or four of them who are have the time and or are willing to take the time to be there for me uh, sometimes just to be a sounding board um, other times to hold me accountable and push me harder um, there's there's just nothing better for an entrepreneur than having you know that kind of, of support available. I also would have to say that in um, th this company, by the way, is now we're primarily in San Francisco, but I launched it initially or started it initially in in Portland. In both cities, there are great support services like um, law firms that are willing to provide some great counsel early on and, and hold off on collecting their fees until um, they're, until the, you know, the bigger round of funding. Those kinds of resources are, are just so valuable to, to entrepreneurs and I'm grateful to be able to have tapped into some of those resources. And I guess I say the third thing is that, again, today, uh, launching a startup, there's so many more uh, technical tools and there's Gmail. Uh, when, I, when I think back to how much money I spent in my first startup on offices and mail servers and um, and we bought servers, application servers, now we use Amazon, all of those kinds of resources. It's really possible to launch a company today on, on very little, well, <laughs> relatively less money than was the case even just 10 years ago. I'm not sure. So the, 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 the question about a abyss is a really interesting one. I think that in a lot of respects there's, there's always an abyss. You know, until, until you move out of the stage of being a startup and we're running on our own uh, revenue and making enough money to keep going, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of one abyss after another. The one we're at right now is that uh, we actually just completed a, a really challenging but great time of shifting gears on our application. We first had it as a benchmarking application and, and we're testing it in banks. Uh, and got, that's where we got the feedback that this technology could be used very effectively for information sharing. So that was a really tough time to conduct that pivot and we've done that now. We have a credible offering. Now it's getting the backing of and the capital to make that operational, to go into production, to release it, get people using it. Um, so so that's, that's certainly weighing very, very heavily on my mind. The other um, the other challenge, and uh, we'll, we'll call it an abyss, <laughs> is that there's a, a strong grassroots feel to our offering. It's very much about private companies adopting this application. They can adopt it informally. I sense that we're going to be fighting um, some of the temptation to try to formalize that and, and uh, in the way we launch this product through partners, and I want to make sure that we don't lose the grassroots feel. I certainly find inspiration to keep going from the investors and advisors and, and um, 
team that, that I have with this um, company, I think I have an additional advantage as an entrepreneur. I come from a long line of entrepreneurs, actually, on both sides of my family. Um, on my dad's side of the family, they were inventors who started businesses around the invention. On my mom's side, it was um, you know, uncles and aunts and cousins who looked at existing businesses and said, shoot, I can do a lot better job with that one than, than is currently the case. Their stories and their experience and, and that kind of family-based uh, incentive and pressure to, to build the business is, is very much um, a wave that I ride on. Um, I had a neat experience after my first company of going to a family reunion in, in the Midwest. Um, and it was just great to sit there, inspiring to sit there and, and hear all of the stories about um, how they started the business and why they thought it was important and what they'd done with it. And, um, and, and these, were, these were companies just like the companies that we're serving at Luminous. They're, they were not raising investment capital. They had to come up with the, a product or a service or an offering that customers were willing to pay for it. That was how they grew. So. I just find those stories awe-inspiring. They play in my mind all the time. Um, great inspiration, great reminder of who we serve. Um, it's, it's a lot of what keeps me going. I have two wonderful daughters uh, who are uh, growing up. They were young when I did my first startup, but they're now um, 21 and 23. And, um, I try to be careful about passing along some of the stress um, of what I go through with this particular startup, um, but you know they're, they uh, they think I'm great, kind of unconditionally, <laughs> and uh, uh, knowing getting that encourage from them and encouragement, and you know my oldest daughter saying, "Oh, mom, your product is the best product ever, and it's the best idea ever," and and uh, I believe it, and that allows me to to keep going.